morning to the folks and joining us in the parking lot, the hardy folks who are out there on that cold morning. And of course, good morning to those who are joining us online. We will have our normal deal for communion. So for those in the parking lot, Deacon Terry will bring it out to you. Uh, we will say the prayer for spiritual communion for those who are not able to, to get physical communion. And we do have wafers, consecrated wafers available in the narthex for folks to come by and pick up immediately after the service uh, if you'd like to do that. Uh, just a few other things. We are going to be starting our, our read this year for the Gospel of Mark, accompanied by a book called Fully Human, Fully Divine. We'll be starting in another week or two, so if you would like to, to be a part of that, please let me know. Uh, Father Dominic does continue to offer free sessions of pastoral counseling on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, so we thank him for that generous offer, and if you'd like to take advantage of that, you can uh, please get in contact with him directly. If you don't know how to do that, let me know, and I can put you in contact. And then, uh, for our most importantly, for our common life, today is the day of our annual meeting. So immediately following this service, so starting at 10 or, or thereabouts, as close as possible, we'll have a, a Zoomed annual meeting. And if you would like to, I did mail out yesterday, again, the, all the link information so that you can call in on a phone, you can also dial in on your computer or whatever. Uh, if you don't have that information and would like it, get a hold of me immediately after the service on my phone. You can send me a text or an email, and I'll see if I can get that to you. And I think that's it for me. Oh, I just want to say one last word of uh, thanks. So Bob Renderick and I suspect Lenny Scott and maybe Larry Dutton, but certainly Bob got our rugs cleaned, or maybe Jim Shields too, and the chairs put back in the sanctuary. And so I'm grateful to them for their work on that. All right, once again, thank you for being with us for this worship, and our service will now begin. We'll open in the St. David's songbook number 14, Some Christians Going to Sing. <laughs> continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. We continue with the Gloria on page 356. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue now with the reading. Our first reading is taken from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, go in the day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nivea shall be overthrown. And the people of Nivea believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they had turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is portions of Psalm 62, and we will read this psalm responsively. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On scales they are lighter than breath. All of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that the power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Our second reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they have none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possession. And those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence praise hymn is number 533 in the hymn. 
Jesus has been baptized. He's endured 40 days of temptation in the wilderness. Then Jesus gets to work. And virtually the first thing Jesus does before working any miracles or even doing much teaching is to call disciples. So last week we heard about Philip and Nathaniel. This week it's Peter and Andrew, James and John. I've always wondered if there's a backstory here for any of the disciples, especially I think for our four this morning, or if this is their first encounter with Christ. Either way, what Mark says is pretty dramatic. So Jesus is walking along the shore of Galilee. He notices Peter and Andrew. Jesus says, follow me. And boom, it happens. It's all it takes. They become Jesus' disciples on the spot. Same thing happens with James and John, and if anything with James and John is even more dramatic. When Jesus calls them, they're working with their father. But immediately, Mark tells us, they drop what they're doing, they leave their father sitting in the boat, and they follow Jesus. So when I preached on Jesus' baptism a couple of weeks ago, I emphasized that Jesus was 30 when he began his public ministry. Jesus already had a life, but at baptism, Jesus abandoned the life he had been leading to take up his ministry. When Jesus calls his disciples in this story, Jesus asks them to do the same thing. Jesus asks them to abandon the life they have known and to embrace a new life with him. For Peter, that means leaving behind a mother-in-law for sure, perhaps also a wife. For James and John, it means leaving behind their father and perhaps other family members. 
Now, presumably, Jesus knew more or less what he was getting into when he began his public ministry. But as becomes very clear over the course of the Gospels, that was not true for Peter or Andrew, James or John. They were, in this moment, immediately giving up everything that was familiar and following Jesus into an almost totally unknown future. The faithfulness of Jesus' disciples in this moment, that immediate response to his call to drop everything and to commit their entire lives to him, has always impressed me. But most years I'm not sure exactly how that story applies to my own life or to our lives together. I know for me there have been a few twists and turns along the way, that's true for most of us, but I've never been called to abandon everything in order to follow Christ in an entirely new way. But in the year since our last annual meeting, in some ways, in a lot of ways really, I have been, we all have been. So on March 15, 2020, we had our last regular service of the year. Of course, we didn't know it at the time. It quickly became clear that Christ was calling us, at least temporarily, to abandon everything we knew about church, the life that was familiar, the life that we loved. And Christ was calling us to follow him into very unfamiliar waters. Over the last year, we've had to wrestle with really deep and fundamental questions about how to be church in circumstances that none of us could have envisioned this time last year. So how do we worship? if we can't physically be together? What does that mean for sharing Eucharist? How can we as a parish continue to support each other in our lives and our relationships with Christ? What should Christian formation look like for adults or for children? How can we love and serve our neighbors? Virtually overnight, those questions and lots more like them were forced on us by the pandemic since then, since the pandemic began, since at least it hit us, we've been engaged in a continual series of experiments in how to be church now. Our time of experimentation is not over. So in a half hour or so, we will have our first ever annual meeting on Zoom. I can say that I'm a little anxious about how that will go, as I have been anxious about how a lot of things would go over this course of this last year. But two things have kept me going. Two things keep me going still. The first and the most important is that it is Christ who calls us, Christ who leads us. Christ has called us to follow him into an unknown future, unknown to us anyway, just like Christ called the first disciples. And like them, we're not always great at following the Christ who leads us. But always, Christ was with them. Always, Christ is with us. Christ sustains us. Christ leads us. Christ helps us to grow at least towards the full stature of Christ. That's the lesson of our gospel reading. The second and also really important thing that has kept me going, that keeps me going still, is the creativity, the faithfulness, the resilience, the good humor of you, the people of St. David's. Now, I'm, I'm looking at four people, but I'm thinking about everybody. And for me, that has been the lesson of preparing for this annual meeting. As I reflected back over the last year, over our ministries, over what it has meant for me, what it has meant for us as a parish, we have all struggled at points along the way in 2020. Already 2021 has proved challenging. But when I have stumbled, you, I'm still looking at four, still thinking about everybody, uh, you were there. You were like Christ's hands picking me up. When I ran out of steam, you came up with creative new ways to minister to me, to each other, to the world. Through it all, now I'm looking especially at Scott, but not only Scott, you've managed to keep a sense of humor, which has been a huge help. You have truly been an inspiration to me in this last, this challenging year, and for that I thank you, and I thank God. 
Now, like Jesus' disciples when they answered his call, we still don't know exactly what our future holds. That will depend partly on how much longer the pandemic lasts. It will depend even more on where Jesus leads us. But I feel quite confident about a few things. Jesus will continue to be our God. We will continue to follow Jesus as closely and as faithfully as we can. And we will continue to follow Jesus together. And that means grappling together with the question of what to carry with us and what to let go. We won't always agree on how to answer that question. We won't always agree on a lot of things. But as long as we keep focused on following Christ as best we can, as individuals, as a parish, we'll be fine. And keeping focused on Jesus is one thing St. David's is really good at. And so in new and different ways, we will continue in 2021 in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. We will persevere in resisting evil and proclaiming by word and example the good news of God in Christ. We will seek and serve Christ in all persons, strive for justice and peace among all people, and cherish the wondrous works of God in creation. That's our baptismal covenant. We'll continue to do all that with creativity and faithfulness and resilience and good humor as long as the pandemic lasts. And we will continue to all do all that with creativity and faithfulness and resilience and good humor long after the pandemic is over. We will because we are Christ's disciples. And that's what Christ's disciples do. So I end with a prayer of thanks to Christ, who calls us forward into an unknown future with him. I give thanks to the Holy Spirit, who empowers us along the way. And I give thanks for you, my faithful companions on the journey. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Once again, this morning, renew our baptismal vows. You can find that on page 292 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, page 292. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. I will, God God's power. Power. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God God's power. Power. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God God's God's power. Power. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself. I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Will you cherish the wondrous works of God and protect the beauty and integrity of creation? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth 
by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins. Keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the people. Our prayers this morning are form four, and they're on page 388 in our prayer book. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the way of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence of your earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We also pray this morning for our annual meeting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. This morning we lift up Lee, Christine, Mary, Pat, Ellen, Tony, Barbara, Joe, Paul, Titchy and the Torres families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. This morning we lift up Louise Wentworth for the Berry family. Lord, we also give thanks for Daniel for remission of Cronin's disease. We also lift up the Pilate family, Tony and Janessa Pitillo, the Quins, Pat Reese, and the Rendrick family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor in the prayer of confession on page 360. Page 360. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So we greet each other as we can. Peace to folks here on the screen, out in the parking lot. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy home be So our service continues with the birthday prayers. I know of two birthdays. Janet Kopazinski is celebrating her birthday today, and Ellen Rendrick is celebrating her birthday, I think, just a couple of days ago. So the birthday prayer is on page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O as their days increase, bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrow. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a happy birthday to both. And our service continues now with the Great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer B, which begins on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give God, God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels, and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with blessed David and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
continue now with the prayer for spiritual communion for those who are not able to participate in physical communion. And so if you're not able to have a, a wafer, then please repeat after me. In union, O Lord, in union, O Lord, with your faithful people, with your faithful people, at every altar of your church, at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. Where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. I desire to offer to you, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. Praise, praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today, since I cannot receive you today, in the sacrament of your body and blood, in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. And let me never be separated from you. And let me never be separated from you. May I live in you. May I live in you. And you in me. And you in me. In this life and in the life to come. Amen. In this life and in the life to come. Amen. Our service continues now with the post-communion prayer, which is on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. So let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food, in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you give you peace, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Our call to mission hymn is number 28 in the St. David's Song. <laughs>
Let us go back down the mountain. Love and serve God through God's people. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.